Wow. <laughs> what a wonderful way to start. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's great to have a chance to talk with you. And, and thank you for letting me do this audible book, which has been such a wonderful experience. Oh, thank you so much, Yo-Yo. And uh, everyone, um, welcome. Uh, thank you so much to On Air Fest. Um, it is day three. I hope everyone has been having a wonderful time during the fest. I know that I have. My name is Preston Copley. Um, I am an executive producer uh, at Audible, uh, specifically working in uh, Audible's initiative, Words and Music. Um, I'm joined today by the incomparable Yo-Yo Ma, and it is my great pleasure. Um, so for, for wherever you're tuning in, uh, we thank you for being here. Yo-Yo, there is no one here to help us. This is just you and me. Uh, <laughs> we, we, That's the best thing. Are you ready? <laughs> I am ready. Perfect. Uh, we are working with a little bit of a delay. Um, it's less than a second. I will try not to jump on uh, all of the things that you say, but it's an ambitious an ambitious talk we're trying to have today. So we're, we're going to unpack, uh, you know, the beginner's mind, the audible original that was released uh, this Thursday, April 8th uh, in the United States for free on audible. Uh, and then kind of try and get into the philosophy behind the beginner's mind uh, and its impact 
on uh, your life and, and creativity and how you approach culture. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. I'm ready to go. <laughs> so we'll start off with some, some, some easy stuff. Um, during this kind of period of immobility, was there uh, like any unique consumption habits that, that you have in terms of uh, like entertainment? Uh, do, you, do you listen to podcasts? Were you a, uh, a reader, a TV watcher? Well, I think, you know, all of the above. I think, uh, you know, a lot of different television series have been um, watched and, and I think podcasts and audible books. Lo and behold, I think on <laughs> car trips that we're, uh, you know, I think uh, that the ones that we've had to take and, and actually even before the pandemic, I should say, uh, that's been a friend, uh, you know, while traveling and while uh, waiting for things, whether you're, uh, you know, waiting for pickups and, and, uh, and it's been an incredible way to, uh, to, to gain new knowledge in a space that is often a mobile, mobile space. And, um, and, and I have to say, I've done more good thinking during this time. I'd feel like this was almost a, an, an enforced sabbatical or maybe a version of, of retirement, of early retirement. <laughs> Is this what retirement feels like? You know, you're kind of, uh, uh, you're busy, but uh, not doing so-called your job, but actually doing a lot of meaningful things. And so um, I, I've treasured this time while at the same time, um, you know, aghast and mourning uh, the, you know, the statistical tragedies that, that, that went on around the world. So it's kind of uh, a mixed bag of, of, you know, feeling incredibly privileged to have food and, and, and space. Uh, and, uh, but really also thinking about what are the things uh, you know, what, what's all of this for and what are we doing it for? So asking some fundamental questions of which this uh, beginner's mind is, is the result of some of that thinking. Well, yeah, let's yeah, talk about that. Talk about you know, that. you, you um, kind of reference some kind of dichotomies of the experience of being immobile and quarantined during this period. And I think, you know, I think that's really expressed throughout um the the audio piece beginner's mind but let's uh, let's uh start kind of at the beginning in terms of uh in terms of what beginner's mind is to you i would say that it is uh that it is not exactly a book uh, because there is no kind of physical uh representation of it and it is um so much more of a uh oral experience built purposefully for for audio um you know that kind of integrates um, music into the narrative storytelling in um, just a really beautiful and specific way. But but uh, please go into it a little bit more about um, what it what it is to you. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I can talk first a little bit about the format, the idea of joining words in music, please. which is this is, is one of the themes of of, of this talk. Um, for me, uh, music has never been sound for its own sake. I think that's one part of it. But I, I've always felt that uh, sounds, organized sound, is a uh, is a form of expressing ideas and ideas that actually join the head and the heart. And if you're mm -hmm. Uh, and 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 the physical because playing music is is you, I, well I use my hands so it's it's in a way it's joining the head heart and hands and words uh, I mean writing words it's also a physical thing but but I think both aspects of these uh, mediums uh, for me is an expression of organized imagination. 
And, mm. and what I love about this form is that in a way it's unique onto itself. You know, every time we invent a new technology, you know, people think, okay, well, is it, you know, is the camera, is it painting? Uh, uh, well, eventually it becomes, uh, photography becomes its own thing. And, and every time there's a fusion of things, it's, you, you're actually creating a new form that in a way uh, is unique onto itself. And I think that, that it, in this form, words and music has uh, the potential of, you know, framing a, sort of, an, an, you know, a different mode of expression. And I felt that way um, after writing, thinking about what music, where to put the music and um and and that's you know that that's the that's the form part of it the the beginner's mind part of it um came from so many aspects of my lives uh, of my life uh which feels like a number of lives i'm um, sure <laughs> first of all as as a performer it's really easy to uh to say that you know, if I'm performing at the end of the day and I've been up since six o'clock in the morning, I've had 14 hours go by uh, and my mind is cluttered. So yeah. in order for me to actually fill my mind with just a message that I want to share with an audience, I need for it to be uncluttered. I need to actually have a beginner's mind to say, okay, let's wipe the slate as my mind were a chalkboard, you know, I'm erasing it. And then, okay, it's blank. What are we going to say tonight? Let's fill it in with all the things that, you know, are crying to get out. And, and that's the best way to, for me to be present, uh, to advocate for a voice, a message, and that I, I'm, really, really wishing to share with somebody else. Another viewpoint is I'm an immigrant. And the the idea of landing from one country to another, from one system of thinking of one, you know, sort of where there, you can say maybe there's a combined shared values or a visual look, or maybe it's the language, it's the food, it's, and to get to another country, depending on when I arrive, someone arrives, you either carry a lot of baggage with you. Oh, this is different. Oh, this is, this is not as good. This is not, I right. know I came to it with at age seven when it was possible to have a beginner's mind to say, wow, hit me with everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, this is interesting. Everything. And, and I, I love it. It was like a, it was a big welcoming message for me to say, my goodness, this is a whole world I can explore. And to well, this is th this is very interesting because, um, you know, uh, I love a phrase that you used earlier to talk about the me the medium itself, kind of a, an effort in organized imagination, and that uh, to me kind of is informed by uh, the idea of a practice, like a like a like a an element of rigor associated with organizing ideas and that that in in working on this piece consuming it um it, that is one of the things that i really would love to unpack the idea of beginner's mind as a practice like an effortful work and i i would love to track when when the change happened between kind of arriving as a child into the United States where uh, like a beginner's mind was all that you may have to um, a point where now you're approaching, you know, your work trying to manifest a beginner's mind. Um, you know, you're, you are effortfully trying to strip away preconceptions. Uh, when does that shift? How does that shift? Um, was it something that you just uh, kind of realized over the course of the of the last you know year of immobility or or is it has it been a rigorous practice for you well it's it's interesting uh that, that now that you're kind of focusing on that um uh, it's uh i would say that it's an idea that i've had for a long time 
and maybe not even pre-idea, something that I realized possibly intuitively. Uh, uh, I know, though, that about 20 years ago, I heard uh, a Frank Zappa quote. And <laughs> Frank Zappa was asked, you know, I don't know what it is about people that I write this song, it becomes very popular. And then my friends say, hey, Frank, this is such a great song. Will you write me one just like it? <laughs> right? Which is, that's sort of like the contradiction, the paradox, and that it's so good. It's such a great invention. I want one just like it. I want right. it replicated uh, in the same way. And, and I think that's a basic contradiction we all have. It's about uh, uh, joining traditions and innovation in one room. Interesting. Right? Everything that we have that's a tradition is actually a result of invention. Mm. Our constitution was invented. Our country was actually invented. So, you know, nationalism was invented. And now it's like, this is the country. And okay. so, in a way, we, you know, we all know the, 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 the phrase, uh, thinking out of the box. It's sure. now everybody talks about, oh, we, let's think out of the box. In a way, beginner's mind is thinking before the box. <laughs> <laughs> I love that expression. And there's something there's something in it that has to do with, and you mentioned this a little bit, I think a little bit ago, but it has to do with presence in terms of, you know, the idea of being present. Um, and it, 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 there's, a, there's a bit of it that also has to do with, um, it would seem the idea of in, the notion of impermanence. Um, and then also, you know, that, that kind of reclaiming of wonder, um, from a child's perspective, that kind of uh, that that optimism associated with potential, um, and and cultivating that earnestly in yourself. Can I ask? This is you know, you are such a unique person. I don't know that I'll have the opportunity to ask a question like this again. But you know, in in terms of reclaiming a child's mind, um, your child's mind, meaning your mind as a child. Um, you began to play the cello at four or five, f four or five years old. Four, yeah. Mm -hmm. four. So between four and seven, you you have an aptitude with the cello that is prodigious. You know, it it, it just it it is, and you find yourself kind of introduced to American society in kind of an extraordinary way with, you know, Leonard Bernstein <laughs> introducing you and, you know, you, you end up in front of Pablo Casals and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that later too. But can you take us into the mind space, if you can, of a, of a four through seven year old with just wild aptitude for a f f f for uh, an instrument what was it like to to learn about music and learn about yourself that you might have this gift what, did it feel like a natural gift well i i think uh the the thing i mean you're talking now from the perspective of an adult but right. from the perspective of a child uh you're a child. You know that 99.9% uh, .9 of the human population is way taller than you are. <laughs> that's, right. <laughs> that's an obvious thing, right? And you know that somehow you think one day you're going to be, you know, upwhere in that percentile, hopefully, sure. right? And <laughs> so you know physically, visually, that there's going to be a process of growth ahead. Right. So no matter what you do, it's it's within the context of, well, I'm not grown up yet, and I have a lot to learn. What's interesting about an adult is that often we think we know a lot, our lives are incredibly busy, and so 
and we're often celebrated for the thing that you do mm -hmm. that we do right you are right. an executive producer and you do this but you're much more than that <laughs> you're much more than a guy who does words and music you're a dad for one thing and that occupies a huge amount of your psychic energy and time you have a it son sure tomorrow <laughs> yeah exactly and so so uh, uh, but but in in society you're viewed as oh yeah preston copy he's the guy who does this and right i've become the guy that plays the cello yeah but that's not you know as a child that was one of the things that I did and I and I enjoyed it and that was nice. I had two tiger parents, which helps with the, you know, acquisition of of the ability to do neuromuscular uh, <laughs> on, on on an instrument. So so that's you know, but that's not a, a in my mind, it's not a big deal. It's a big deal comparatively to other children who don't play the cello uh at age five and six mm -hmm. right that's so you're you're in the upper uh percentile of of or you're in the tiny percentile of people that actually can do something that others don't do but that's not that special because it's within my life that the thinking of the child i'm you know i know i'm a child i know there's right. a lot to learn and i know right. there's a the big world out there and and uh so it's uh i, I think it, it, you know so that's my perspective on yeah on on this i hope I and in that growth that. in that growth trajectory you know where you come you come to um you come to yourself today and you know you're kind of 50 years on in a career or in, in a relationship with an instrument I, I mean do you still get surprised by it um, I think there it's training there. I think, uh, you, you know, it's like the, um, I've thought a lot about gratitude during mm. this past year, uh, and, and gratitude that look, a lot of my friends are sick. A lot of my friends are no longer living. I'm living. And and some are immobilized. I can move, you, you know, and as you know, the joke, if you're over 40 and you wake up in the morning and nothing hurts, you must be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so I am grateful for, you know, the aches and pains and, you know, I can't run that far that fast, uh, but I'm alive. So I think, I think, but you have to kind of, as opposed to mourning, Oh, I used to be able to do that when I was 19. You know, mm -hmm. I'm now 65. I can't do that, but I know there are many things I can do, and I have the freedom to think. And that is huge. So, so on the one hand, I have to appreciate that I can take up the cello, I can still play because yeah. I don't yet have arthritis, right? Because that could happen tomorrow, and then I won't be able to play. And it's, and, and I know that's possible. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who was just hit by a truck I'm yesterday. So and, oh, and geez. you know, and that could have, that could have happened to me. Um, so, I mean, I think these, uh, I, I'm much more appreciative of the accidents of life and the fact that certain accidents have not happened to me yet. But that's something that takes, there's a consciousness, there's an effort involved in, in thinking right. that way. Uh, you know, it's like, again, the phrase is like, it could be worse. Oh, I feel terrible today. It's like, <laughs> oh, this happened, this happened. Yep, it could be worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> Comparative injury. So, you know, uh, and maybe it's just a Pollyanna-ish way of, of thinking about things. But, uh, but so much of my life, I think, was accidental i right. do feel that i lived the life of waldo you know waldo who gets dropped in 
to different places. Where's Waldo? Well, you know, he's in Egypt. <laughs> I was like, where is Waldo? <laughs> he's in the well, that is That is a really interesting way to, to look at serendipity. And it does, it does, um, it, it does follow at least, you know, from, from your accounts in the, in the audio work, you know, there, there is such a presence of serendipity in your life. Um, it, it, especially in that, especially in the, uh, sense of friendship, you know, we were just talking about friends, uh, you have, uh, it seems like you are blessed to have a cohort of, of friends and close collaborators, uh, whom you discuss in the, uh, in beginner's mind in, in just glowing tones. And we hear, we hear from them as well in terms of, you know, their musical expressions in some uh, songs. And I'm speaking of, you know, Emmanuel Lax and, and Catherine Stott. Um, collaboration, you know, it seems important to you. It seems important to you. Is it, is it important because it's fun? Is it important because uh, like in it, you find an avenue to reclaim a beginner's mind um, it, it, because of the spontaneity of the collaboration? Well, I, I love conversation because you can't plan conversations. Otherwise, you're reading a script. Right. Right. And every conversation brings out something unexpected. You could know someone for 50 years and you, and you suddenly learn something new about them, uh, either because they're going through it or because it's been there all along, but you never touched on the subject. And, and that's... You know, the, for me, the infinite variety of human possibility exists in friendship, in collaboration. Um, and that's what makes co collaboration so interesting. It, it always takes you to a different place than you might have imagined. Someone has a different idea. You think about it. You absorb it. You take it as your own, you acknowledge it, and then suddenly you have a different idea. And that's how things happen. Well, you, say, you know, that that's, if I'm not mistaken, it, it sounds like uh, if that's almost the animating spirit behind um, the, the Silk Road um, project, um, what happens when strangers meet, you know, that was a, a line I'm, you know, quoting, quoting from you. Um, that, that kind of intersection when uh, when new ideas and, and open minds are, are able to connect. Sure. Well, I think, again, I think, uh, you know, there's that saying, if you look at a grain of sand deeply enough, you will discover the universe. And And it's true. Like, I mean, if we talked for eight hours, I'm sure that we would establish so many mutual points of connection mm. that that you know we we would touch on a lot of the universe and unexpectedly you know if i ask you about your grandparents or if you ask me about my grandparents or you know uh or maybe it's your son's playmates at, at you know in 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 preschool or 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 my grandchildren you know but between those connections, you know, what the six degrees of separation. And oh. I think uh, between Silk Road, I've always thought about, um, and maybe it's the immigrant in me, you know, uh, thinking that how am I an American citizen? How am I uh, touched by European culture? Hmm. How am I, you know, how do I relate? To France, I related to France after Charlie Hebdo, and I thought to myself, you know, je suis Charlie. I wanted to be to have a French passport after that because after Charlie Hebdo, after Nice, after uh, Bataclan, you know, I thought, no, this hurts because this could have been me, and I am part of that. You, you know, so. So I, I feel it, real sympathy for, and you know, if if it weren't for Lafayette, we wouldn't exist, right? I mean, so so there, you know, we wouldn't have the Statue of Liberty. If Hamilton the musical taught us nothing, it's 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 that. <laughs> right. 
and and Hamilton himself spoke like five languages. Totally, absolutely. You know, find me someone in our government today, and there are people. But you know, at that time, let's find out what the founding fathers knew and did, and let's you know, it's quite impressive. Maybe that's why they could invent a country. You you know. Uh, yeah, and so so I, I feel like if you just look a little bit further, we feel all these mutual con connections. And I think the Silk Road, I, I I really was curious about our planet because suddenly, you know, we all see the shape of the globe. We see, you know, the Soviet Union was this large, huge, largest country in the world, and then suddenly, one day there was no more Soviet Union, and sixteen new countries appeared, and I had no idea. I knew nothing about any of them. You know, vast space. Can you pronounce the names? Do you know the capitals? Of, do you know what they do? You know, it's like all complete blank. And for someone that kind of was a little proud about saying, you know, sure. oh, and around, you know, I've been around the globe. I travel a lot. <laughs> Here's something you know nothing about. Again, a beginner's mind. Right. Here's what. I assumed I knew something, and suddenly, I something tells me that you know nothing. It, th that is so. That is so interesting, especially having had the benefit, uh, you know, have, ha having the benefit of knowing your piece so well, the 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 beginner's mind piece so well. I, I wonder, um, you know, you, you you've just spoken about your uh, kind of connection to. Uh, your personal connection to Europe and to Paris, and and um, there's this moment, and the and I'm gonna you know talk about the 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 audio product as a as a fan for for a, for a moment, um, and I'm gonna talk about a section right at the kind of in the first third of it, so we don't give too too much away for those uh, who you know want to listen. But um, there's a moment where you are talking about the the nature of what you know to be true about your parents. Um, kind of just the facts, and um, uh, you know their their experiences of kind of both confronting the war, World War II, and their um, immigration to the United States. And the pros are are nearly Spartan. They're very they're very precise. Um, but all of a the sudden, there are two pieces of music that come in and underscore your words and it is a transportive experience it is it is nearly physically transportive i mean it, you know you, you talk about music being physical um do you do you you know the moment i'm talking about do you remember the the pieces of think, uh, it yeah, is one of the pieces uh is uh is a piece of music that my father actually wrote and right. uh, and i think and so you know, he was a composer. He's no longer alive. He died when he was eighty, and uh, about uh, ten years, uh, no, thirty years ago, actually. And uh, and it was it was very touching for me, actually. In fact, to insert that music there because I had never performed it, and and so you know, and to dig this up. Uh, and to play it sort of like, this is my father's voice. This is what I do all my life. It's like, I listen to someone's music. I think about them. I think about how they lived. I think about the uh, the era that they lived in. And and suddenly I'm doing this to my father <laughs> and say, well, so this is the guy that wrote this. And he was in France for 27 years. And he was there to, you know, and his PhD thesis was, uh, you know, Chinese music in a European style. So if you think about that, and you right. think about then in, you know, 1998, I'm trying to do something called the Silk Road and say, it's not about Chinese music, but it's sort of like about, let's take that, you know, all this landmass and all the musics that people have been, and poetry and and that people have been creating over thousands of years, uh, the apple did not fall too far from the tree. It right? felt that way. You know, it, 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 
it felt that um, fundamental, that the, the kind of interplay of the words with the, the music, it felt like, a, a, like an extraordinary example of the possibility of the format. And it also felt so kind of deeply meaningful um, to you and the idea that you were trying to um, communicate. Um, I, I was just, a, I just love that, that period of the piece. It, you know, we're talking about music. Do you uh, have a moment to play um, another yeah, selection? Know, I, would love to, I would love to actually play for you something that is, in fact, the very first piece of music I learned. So oh, this wow. is, so this is like, uh, you know, I was by that time, uh, you know, four and a half years old. I'm 65. So this is 60 years ago. I learned this piece. And what I love about this piece is that this piece, this prelude from the first Bach suite, for me, is an expression of the infinitude of nature, of the variety that's possible in nature. And so, uh, you know, 60 years later, it has that same wonder uh, uh, in that I feel for it, that as I probably did when I was five. So. beautiful thank you so much now before we we started speaking um i told you we were going to blow through the time we couldn't account for the fact of how quickly it would go and you're right that if we spent eight hours together we could find so many mutual connections but unfortunately you know we are we're coming to the end of our talk i want to i want to leave enough time for parting thoughts and acknowledgements as well um i'd love to acknowledge your team um Ben and Jonathan and uh, and Jesse, they were just so extraordinary to work with uh, on this project. It's really a testament to, I think, you know, kind of perhaps a top down leadership. And um, it's they're just an extraordinary group of people. Well, uh, thank you so much for saying that, because when I'm so I, I just want to say I'm nothing without my team. I'm nothing without, I think, uh, the pillars of support, my family, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, uh, my neighbors, my mm. friends, and in particular, my team that actually helps me uh, think and create 
and 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 speaking of hierarchy when we work together we have a totally flat hierarchy it's not you know everybody has equal voice we listen we listen and we listen and then we do uh we hmm. do a lot of listening and and we really seriously take in whatever because uh none of them are musicians and they all come from different fields uh and and that is what makes for me creativity interesting it's not the same we're not you know different ages almost like three different generations and so i value what they know because what they know is not what i know and i know what i know and it's actually not that much in fact i have friends that fill in all the gaps of sort of like no tell me about this tell me about that and they're very willing to share as i'm willing to share with whatever i know and 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 that actually helps our uh develop better points of view so if you like this audible book you're absolutely right to thank my team um i think ben and jonathan in particular were just uh amazing in helping conceive and structure and give me you know assignments and say you know do this do this no not enough of this more of that and you know it's like literally having you know the kind of relationship writer and editor has right i mean that's absolutely the audible team you have been so wonderful with us also because you set out exactly what you needed to do what you needed and we thought okay good and they heard you so believe me they heard you so well that they'd say yo yo you need to do this right now as you can. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were wonderful collaborators and, and believe you were me. Well. <laughs> they really listened to you and that's great because because the the process was enjoyable and 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 we we really had fun doing it and and I feel like I learned a lot from it and could That's... you know uh and you forced me to do something that I haven't done before that that I sort of wanted to get out I didn't want to do an autobiography I didn't want to do but this is actually these are just some concepts that that uh we thought uh that came out during this time which I hope uh maybe helpful because it brings in some of the issues that we're all thinking about right now and uh and uh and I hope in the future that that I can report to you a number of years from now to say okay well as a result of this we're now in this chapter and this is what we're doing and and so thank you for that well I think all of that effort is to the great benefit of the listener and it certainly helped me and um you know I, I would like to close by you know thanking uh, Audible as well and thanking On Air Fest thanking my team uh Britt McCombs who you know and uh, Carson Donnelly uh who are just so extraordinary in their own right um and uh I, I hope everybody takes a moment to listen to Beginner's Mind which is uh available now on Audible uh free for uh, everyone in the U.S., um, I think you will walk away from it uh, a, mo a more hopeful person. Uh, and so thank you for your artistry, uh, Yo Yo. It has been a, a real treat. Thank you so much, Preston. And would you like me to play something to an outro? Sure, you play us out. Yeah, absolutely. That would be beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and the outro will end with... Uh, uh, a little thing for Cameron. So this is going oh. home, uh, and uh, which is appropriate because um, you know whatever that you do, whatever we all do, is uh, we end up bringing it home.
That's for camera. Right there.